The CEO of SpaceX, Elon Musk, has lofty plans to transport a million people to the Red Planet by 2050 as part of his mission to build a human colony there during his lifetime. However, NASA has revealed a horrifying discovery on Mars, putting Musk's ambitions at risk. The research into space travel and exploration appears to be limitless. The team at NASA and Elon Musk have been diligently working at their desks to find out as much as they can about Mars. Musk wants to see mankind flourish on many different planets. We can't be that if we can't exist on Mars. With the help of NASA, Musk is making significant progress in his quest to ascertain whether or not life ever existed on Mars, and whether or not it might exist there again. The tech tycoon's understanding of this is critical to his plans to colonize Mars. Now, they have a rover that is helping with this effort. The most recent Martian visitation is the Perseverance rover, accompanied by a miniature helicopter named Ingenuity. What has NASA's Perseverance mission discovered on Mars, and how do these findings affect you? Hold tight as we bring you Elon Musk and NASA's recent groundbreaking discoveries about Mars, which are sure to rock the space industry. While you're watching this, millions of kilometers away on Mars, an autonomous vehicle is making its way over the surface. It's called Perseverance, and it's worth more than any car on the road today, $2.7 billion. What was the point of NASA's massive investment in the Perseverance space shuttle? Let's find out. When Mars spacecraft send back images, the mountains dominate what they observe and record. There is more to these mountains than meets the eye, as several of them are active volcanoes. There is a volcanic region on Mars, and it has several features that are similar to those on Earth, such as craters and earthquakes. So, what distinguishes our planet from Mars, except the obvious, atmosphere and gravity? Many of Mars' mountains and volcanoes are concentrated in a region called Tharsis, which spans around 3,000 kilometers. This province is near the equator, and it features four enormous volcanic domes. There is a series of volcanoes on Mars, the tallest of which is Ascreus Mons at around 11 kilometers. The other two are Pavonis Mons and Arcea Mons. Olympus Mons, however, stands as Tharsis's highest peak. Olympus Mons. Located to the northwest of these three giant volcanoes is Olympus Mons which, at 16 miles in height, is roughly three times as high as Mount Everest. It's the largest mountain in the solar system, with a diameter of about 375 miles and a 50-mile-wide caldera on top. It has been nearly 115 million years since the last lava eruption, when the caldera was still over two miles deep. Vias Marineris and Craters Mars valleys are equally as breathtaking as the planet's majestic mountains, the Vias Marineris Canyon system is about 2,500 kilometers in length, up to 120 kilometers in width, and up to 4 kilometers in depth. Tharsis, a region close to the canyon that emerged during Mars' cooling period, was a tectonic crack. Maybe at some point in the distant past, a river of water or lava swept by it. In addition to the canyons, there are numerous impact craters. Two of the most notable are Hellas and Argyre which developed about 3.9 billion years ago. The impact craters on Mars's surface are still in their original locations, in contrast to Earth, where they've been buried by plate tectonics. These elements combine to make a successful Mars landing a formidable task. Surface of Mars Finding a landing site on Mars that is secure and scientifically interesting can be challenging. The landing spot should be generally flat, without numerous pebbles, could send the lander crashing to the ground. Northeast of Tharsis and Vias Marineris is an impact crater known as Chrysi Planitia, also known as the Plains of Gold. There was formerly a constant supply of water in the region. In 1976, the Viking 1 spacecraft sent back the first images ever taken of Mars' surface, showing the red planet's rocks, dust, and sand dunes. Ares Vallis, a huge outflow channel flowing into Chrysi Planitia, was investigated by the Mars Pathfinder lander and the Mars Sojourner rover. Barnacle Bill and the surrounding area were determined to be composed of rocks extremely similar to andesite, a type of volcanic rock present on Earth. The other rock examined was Yogi, the first basaltic rock found on Mars. Round pebbles marked the landing spot, suggesting the ground had once been wet. 
Another discovery is that dust has a magnetic property. Utopia Planitia, half a world away. Utopia Planitia is a massive impact crater with a radius of about 2,000 kilometers. The Viking 2 probe investigated Utopia Planitia at about the same time that the Viking 1 rover studied Pricey Planitia. The scenery is foreign and otherworldly looking because of the ice that covers the stone surface every morning. Scallops formed when ice beneath the water's surface melted, maybe due to an abrupt collision with the low surface pressure. In 2016, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter found additional evidence of water beneath the surface of Utopia Planitia. In 2004, the Gustav Crater on Mars was chosen as the landing site for the Mars Exploration Rover's Spirit. Water is required for the development of the mineral hematite, which was found by Spirit. More evidence of past water on Mars. While Spirit explored Gusev Crater, the largest on Mars, opportunity landed on the planet's opposite side to examine the Meridiani Planum region. Opportunity investigated almost 10 smaller craters before discovering the same thing. Gray hematite with traces of previous water. Gale Crater, which dates back 3.5 to 3.8 billion years, was the next destination for the rover. Circumference-wise, it measures around 93 kilometers, and it appears to have been wet in the distant past. The presence of water-rich sands, organic substances, and sedimentary layers indicates that this may be an old lake bed that has since dried up. Mars's features as a planet. An iron-rich core lies beneath Mars's crust and mantle. The density is around 4 tons per cubic meter, and the composition is remarkably Earth-like. Some rocks in the earliest regions are magnetic, suggesting that a magnetic field formerly existed there. Magnetized surface crater counts indicate that Mars Dynamo shuts down at 4 billion years ago. The seismometer was deployed by the Mars InSight mission in 2018 to monitor for Marsquakes. There were a lot of tremors, but the Marsquakes were completely unique, as was the process by which they were translated into human hearing. The surface of Mars is highly irregular, possibly from earthquakes or storms, and there's abundant evidence of a once abundant water supply. What the Perseverance rover has accomplished thus far, and what the future holds, are discussed here. Sticking the Landing Launching from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on a United Launch Alliance Atlas V-541 rocket at 7.50 a.m. Eastern Time on July 30, 2020, the Perseverance rover is scheduled to explore Mars. Landing on Mars required a series of complex and nerve-wracking maneuvers, all of which Perseverance successfully completed. Since landing on another planet is difficult, only roughly half of the expedition's dispatch to the Red Planet have made it there. Seven minutes of terror were experienced by the robot during this time. Ground control lost contact with the rover Perseverance as it descended through the Martian atmosphere, effectively knocking it offline during its final descent to the Red Planet. The rover successfully landed without any help from Earth because of a communication lag of 11 minutes. Flying a helicopter When the Perseverance landed on Mars, it wasn't alone. It brought a companion. The Ingenuity helicopter developed by NASA took off from the surface of Mars and completed the first powered, controlled flight by humans on another planet. The entire trip lasted about 40 seconds. To fly a helicopter on Mars is very different from doing so on Earth. Mars has a far thinner atmosphere than Earth does since its atmospheric pressure is just around 1% that on Earth. Plus, its gravity is only about a third of that of Earth. Because of this, the Ingenuity helicopter had to be adapted to work in Mars' specific environment. Ingenuity is only meant to be a proof of concept, but it will be a good practice run for eventual missions to Venus and Saturn's moon Titan, both of which have substantial atmospheres and great life-supporting conditions. Collecting Martian Samples Naturally, it was crucial that Perseverance stay on course with its primary objective. After roughly 200 Martian days, the Perseverance rover drilled through a rock dubbed Rochette and brought back its first two Martian samples. During its 687 Earth Day mission on Mars, Perseverance is expected to collect at least 20 samples from the Red Planet's surface using its arsenal of 43 titanium sample tubes. The sixth sample from Mars was taken by the Perseverance in December 2021, capturing Mars in detail. The first images of Mars taken by the Perseverance lander were transmitted home just minutes after touchdown. 
There was presumably once a delta leading to a lake in Jezero Crater on Mars, as shown by the first photos from the Perseverance mission. Mars's old delta, as seen by distant scanning of the Jezero Crater, Closer analysis of the photos reveals a delta that extends into a lake. The pictures revealed the optimum place for Perseverance to travel next, in order to collect samples. The Perseverance is currently making its way to the delta, where it will shoot for matching rocks at the water's surface. Rocks of this age date back to roughly 3.9 billion years ago, a time when conditions on Mars could have been favorable for human habitation. Firing Space Lasers In order to collect samples from rocks, Perseverance can not only drill into them, but also discharge lasers at them. From a distance of about 20 feet, rocks on Mars can be blasted with the help of the supercam on the Perseverance. When the laser hits the rocks, a small amount of rock is vaporized into a hot gas called plasma, and the shockwave caused by the heat and vibration results in a popping sound. Releasing a Mars mixtape, determination ensured that not one, but two microphones arrived on Mars. The EDL microphones were developed so that they could capture the unique sounds of Mars, as well as the spacecraft's fall and landing. After landing on Mars, the Perseverance broadcast a five-hour recording of the planet's sounds and the rover's robotic exploration. Microphones aboard the rover were able to pick up the Ingenuity helicopter's low-frequency humming, even though it was flying more than 260 feet away. Clip includes wind-rustling metal wheels as rover rolls through Martian desert. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about Elon Musk's plan to invade Mars? Will it be successful or not? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.